And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who loves free pizza. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And boy, is it ever a beautiful day here on Milleronia today. Ah, It's always gorgeous. And yes, 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 I know. I create the weather and I run the weather here, but that still doesn't mean I can't say and you can't say what a beautiful day it is on Milleronia. Oh, it really is. And uh, I'm uh, glad to be back here. And so was Colonel Jeff. And in fact, he just took his first ride out here in his new promotion, the James Bond jet from Goldfinger. He just, you know, he deserves it, and, well, uh, there are many, many reasons, but he really does. He deserved that promotion, and those those three helicopter rides you had to take there for quite a while, were uh, they get to you, I guess. They get to mess your head up, mess your body up, and say, oh, come on already. Can't I get here in a better way? Well, yes, you can, and he, oh, it was a good trip. He told me, oh, all sorts of great stories about that trip, three of which I can't tell you. But they, he was, he was happy. And, uh, so was our flight attendant. She's just a beautiful girl from Thailand. And, uh, she's always well dressed until she gets around Colonel Jeff. And that's all I'm going to say (laughs) about that. But he had a great trip out there. You know what though? It is. It's so good to be here especially coming up to the end of the year where, well, we have such a fantastic holiday season. We, if I, I don't mind saying we, we run it, uh, well, which is to say I run it really, really well. And uh, I want you to be there. You know, you come sometime, you arrange for a trip, one of your nice trips, bring your wife, bring your husband, and bring your family, bring your kids. Come alone if you want, but... You can bring everyone here and we'll, we'll make you glad you did. And oh, do we have, oh, do we have, we have good stores and good restaurants. That's one of the reasons I mentioned good pizza there, by the way. We have arranged for some time now, more than a year. I finally said, let's get some good pizza here. Not the kind you get, well, all over our country, all over America on the mainland. You get it, and they advertise and say, hey, this one's great, we're great, we make it great. No, well, no, they don't. And uh, I wanted great pizza here, so I arranged for a great chef to come out, and uh, he's here now. Originally, he was a prisoner, but he he likes it now. So you know what, though? That's, of course, uh, the music always makes me feel better. The Jimmy Stewart Orchestra and the Donna Reed Dancers featuring boy tenor Brad Simpson asking the musical question, if your spouse threatens you to leave you if you don't change your hair color, is that a do or die situation? Yes, for her. Let me make this clear, Brad. If your spouse is threatening you with leaving, you're already dead. Hey, the chances are she's been changing her hair color for 30 years, and you haven't threatened her. Look, here's the answer. Change her hair color with a quick trip to one of our volcanoes, and Ollie Dungmeister, who tossed her in, will walk you right over to one of our best brothels, where the only color they care about is the color of your money. So thank you, Brad. It's a heck of a question. But uh, if your spouse threatens to leave you if you don't change your hair color, is that a do or die situation? Remember, it is, but only for her. And by the Larry Miller store. I'm so glad to be telling you about that. You know, folks, coming up to the end of the year, every year for Christmas and Hanukkah, and you know what? You need good gifts. 
You need good gifts for the people you love. You need good gifts for your family and your friends. And it ends right there, doesn't it, frankly? You don't want to have to give everyone at work, look, a case of wine, you know, here's a bottle for you. Uh, You know what? Family and friends, I think, are good enough for gifts. And the Larry Miller store is the place to get them. Boy, we have good stuff. And just, you know what? Just go to, uh, well, first of all, you can go right to our website, which is LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. (laughs) I like that one. That's a good one. (laughs) That boy, that... Oh, I'm sorry. I should have had the fish. Uh, At any rate, (laughs) come to the Larry Miller store. You can go to our website, and there's a banner there that says the Larry Miller store. Maybe that's why sales have been plummeting when the actual host can't name the store or how to get there. You know what? Do that, folks. We have some, oh, we have great stuff. You're going to love it. Larry, the Larry Miller Drinking Society shirt. It's a T-shirt that featuring the famous LMDS logo and our semi-secret slogan, Nominum Quid Geminus, which means you call that a double? And I love that shirt, and I love that slogan. The brand new Keep Calm and Larry On shirt. I love that one. It's not just a mantra for life. It's the motto sensation that's sweeping the nation. I love saying that. That was Colonel Jeffs, and I think that's cute. I like it. And uh, finally, by the way, I show how tough you are, which is plenty tough, with the brand new... I survived Volcano Number 2, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt shirt. So, you know what? I just realized that they're not brand new anymore, these things. You know, they've been uh, some, somewhere in the 19th century, if I, if, if I recall correctly. And it's good stuff, folks. Get, get something for yourself and something, well, for a loved one and a family member and a friend. All shirts are printed on demand, meaning you can choose from a variety of colors, and they're available in both gentlemen's and ladies' cut T-shirts. And we have something for dogs, too. That's right. Why? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure, but it seemed like a good idea. We like that, right? And so anyway, go to LarryMillerShow.com slash store or to our website. And uh, remember, that's, uh, oh, yeah, that Larry Miller. <laughs> Don't you like your host to be as smart as you are? LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> that's That sounds like it could be the sound a fire truck makes on Milleronia. So it doesn't it doesn't have to scare people, just <laughs> anyway folks, thank you very much. And that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke of the week. This is a good one. Uh, Colonel Jeff and I both got a, a good chuckle out of this and you know my feeling is always hey if you like it, tell well, tell a friend or a family member. So uh, this is an interesting one because, you see, there's an elderly couple there in their 80s, and they go to a sex therapist for, well, some sex therapy, I, I guess. And they, they get there, and the therapist is also a, you know, a doctor and, a, and an analyst, and uh, he, he says, well, this is a bit of a surprise. What can I do for you folks? And, uh, and they say, well, we... Uh, we, you know, uh, we're just curious about it, see if uh, what's up with uh, us and sex, and and the, and then and then the man just says, you know what, we'll we'll just be be honest with you. Would you mind if we just did it right here in front of you, and you could tell us what you think, and uh, but just right here, right now, and uh, and the therapist says, I be honest, I haven't really heard that kind of uh, request before but all right if if you think that'll help yes go ahead and they well 
They're not slow. They just take their clothes off and, and get on the bed in his office there. And they go right at it. God bless them. They, uh, they know what they're doing and they go right at it. And well, a, a good healthy amount later, they finish up and, uh, they, uh, get dressed and smile, say thank you and, uh, give them $50 and, uh, for the session. And then they, they just leave. Well, don't you know that they come back every week, the next week, the week after, the week after that? And it's, same thing, and just ask again, If uh, would you mind if we just make love right here, and you can tell us uh, what you think? And uh, the therapist is, again, a little, a little, frankly, a little, feels a little odd, a little weird, and I, I don't think I see what the problem is here, but oh, oh, all right, if you think that'll, that'll help you then, uh, but, but so far, I mean, you did... All right, go ahead. They do the same thing. Get undressed. Get on the bed. Just do it. Make love and just f finish up. Get dressed. Give them $50 again and uh, smile and say thank you. Have a good day. And they leave. Folks, on the fifth week, they come back in and they ask the same thing. And, you know, and the, and the therapist says to them, look, please, I have to, you know, I have to tell you right now, I don't. You've come in every week for four weeks. This is the, this is the fifth week. And, well, I, I don't see what's wrong here. I don't know why you're doing this. And I, what, what's the big deal to you that you're doing fine? Why, why do you think you have to do this? And what's the reason for this? And, and the man says, well, she's married, so we can't go to her house. I'm married, so we can't go to my house. The motel down the street charges $90. The Hilton downtown charges 150 But we can do it here for 50 And I get $43 back from Medicare. <laughs> we got a, a kick out of that. It goes to show you again, you never, well, you never know in life. There may be someone like that headed for your door soon. But... We got a kick out of that one here. And uh, that leads me to my second favorite part of the show. The Poetry Corner. Uh, still the best string quartet in show business. Yeah, the poetry corner, and uh, this is a good one. I I've had a chance to read so many good poems here for you, and uh, this is a good one. It's called "Lovers Petition" by Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great Emerson. It's a nice title too, "Lovers Petition," and here it is: Good heart that ownest all. I ask a modest boon and small, not of lands and towns the gift, too large a load for me to lift, but for one proper creature, which geographic eye, sweeping the map of western earth, or the Atlantic coast from Maine to Powhatan's domain, could not descry. Is it much to ask in all thy huge creation, so trivial a part, a solitary heart? Yet count me not of spirit mean, or mine a mean demand, for tis the concentration and worth of all the land. The sister of the sea, the daughter of the strand, composed of air and light, and of the swart earth might, so little to thy poet's prayer, thy large bounty well can spare, and yet I think if she were gone, the world were better left alone. Isn't that nice? Emerson was really something in all sorts of ways, but I think that's a lovely poem, and I hope you do too. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. MMM, the Triple M, Magic Movie Moment. Ah, 
that's a great one, too. I love that piano note. Folks, this is why I mentioned in the beginning there James Stewart and Donna Reed. What a cast in this movie. It's a Wonderful Life from 1946, directed by Frank Capra and starring James Stewart, Donna Reed. They're so good in everything they did, but they're wonderful together in this. And that cast, oh, Lionel Barrymore, Thomas Mitchell, Sheldon Leonard, so many. And this movie is worth it. It's a wonderful life. And I'm talking today about a great magic movie moment in it. It's the end and the scene with the Christmas tree and the whole family and all the friends and George's brother. And, well, it's so much the the sentiments are gathered so thick with affection there and happiness and their problems have been solved with the help, of course, of Clarence, the angel. And I asked the colonel here today, I said, I don't want to give anything away. And he said, you know something? This is a great movie. Everyone's seen it. And if they haven't, it's not going to stop them. And I, I, I agree with that. This Christmas tree scene and the bell on the tree rings just as Clarence said it would. And that means they know that means he got his wings. And we're really happy about that. And everybody is singing. I think it's Hark the, the Heavenly Angels Sing. But they sing out at the top of their lungs. Oh, there must be 30 of them in their, in the living room then in the Bailey's house. George Bailey and, uh, well, Lionel Barrymore, who plays Mr. Potter. I guess he's the only one who doesn't show up for that happy get-together. He's still in his office practicing George Bailey. And, uh, whoa, Sheldon Leonard was so good. And this is the bartender. In uh, what was the name of that bar? Oh, please send a note to me and let me know. I can't remember the name of that bar, but uh, Sheldon Leonard is the one. <laughs> what a great act. He was a, such a great actor, producer, writer anyway. And at that point, for him to look at them <laughs> a little quizzically, a little suspicious and says, <laughs> okay, that's it. You two pixies out of here. And... Uh, there's a great phrase in there that he uses as part of the script, but that, boy, you don't hear a lot anyway. Because now there's another thing that, because they say something to him that uh, they, that's very kind of personal. And he says, no, that's another thing. I don't know you from Adams or Fox. And he goes on with the, you know, but that phrase, Adams off Ox, was popular sometimes. Not, I imagine you haven't said it. I haven't said it. The colonel hasn't said it. Ali Dungmeister must say it, actually. He probably does just before he, well, he gives you your last present. But Adam's off, Fox, I love this movie, folks. If you haven't seen it, please do. And if you have, see it again. That scene is such a magic movie moment. They're made and their relatives and all their friends are present. And they keep, well just loading into the house. And even the tax man who had been threatening uh, the Baileys and George Bailey and his business, and, and they, they got out of that, but even the tax man comes in and, and, well, he puts some money into the pot there where they're all gathering. Or oh, it's just on the table, I think, the, uh, the, the bridge table. But he puts some in too, and he sings out too. It's wonderful, folks. See it if you haven't, and if you have, see it again. It's a Wonderful Life from 1946, directed by Frank Capra with the greatest cast in the world. And I, you know what? I hope you have a good Christmas like that one, too. Whew. If you do, it's not one you'll forget. You know, and uh, I'm going back to New York after the show today. And that's a big trip, you know, but, uh, well, from Milleronia here, but I'll tell you, I can, I, I can tell them that my plane is, well, pretty fancy and it's very fast. And we've figured out a way to go actually into the stratosphere 
and arc way up and way down right into New York, and that's all I'm going to tell you about it. I could have a gorgeous to- uh, Tao woman in her beaded grass skirt and serve me drinks and have me a, a spa- give me a spare suit so I can go into the really nice bathroom the way James Bond did and Colonel Jeff does now to shave before landing. But I, I don't do that. You know what? It's a, it's a great flight. And I'm telling you, I love, you know, the Colonel was wondering, do you, uh, f- going back for this movie, it's called Second Act with Jennifer Lopez and Leia Romini and, and so many folks and Treat Williams and me. And it's, it's a terrific movie. I think this could be a terrific movie. And the Colonel wondered, does going back to New York feel like the good old days for me? Because I lived there, I was born there, I lived there, and I started there in show business, and then at the right time, which is the way we all thought of it, yeah, you, uh, well, you put in about four years in New York, going to every club you can. I was at the comic strip, that was my home base. But in those days, yeah, you get in with Catch a Rising Star and the Improv, and every club that was opening up there, that's when you start working on the road, and... uh he said, well, and that's when you start, well, you, maybe you have a girlfriend and you start uh, talking to some of the women, uh, well, at the shows as they come out during the show and uh, go to the washroom and, well, you can be right there at the Velvet Rope. <laughs> uh, I know because I was, because that's a nice way to meet people, I think. I think, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's, say, how'd you like the bathroom? But, I mean... It doesn't mean that much to me. Going back to New York doesn't feel like, oh, boy, home is where the heart is. And just, you know, uh, I don't think that's the way I'm built. I thought it was a great place to live. Well, I loved my parents and the house we, we grew up in on Long Island. But it doesn't quite have a, a good old days feel to me. And, and then uh, the colonel said, has it changed? I don't know. Have I changed? I don't know. I really don't because, you see, New York has a hundred different cities in it. That sounds a little odd maybe, but it's it's true. And where I'm staying, you know, you can spend your whole life in New York. Well, there are people who grew up in Hell's Kitchen, which is where the old improv used to be on 44th Street, and – there are people who grew up in Hell's Kitchen who never left. And I mean, never. I mean, there was no celebration, no festival days where they said, hey, let's go to the Upper East Side or something. They never left their one area. So I love being there. I'm, I'm glad I'm going back. And I'm having lunch with Chernyachin. And uh, Michael Chernyachin is a... Uh, well, a good friend of mine, a very close friend, and he's a great writer. And he's, by the way, oh, the head, the, the top writer on uh, this great show, Law and Order Special Victims Unit with uh, Mariska Hargitay. And oh, what a cast, wonderful cast. And uh, boy, he just wrote an episode for last week that was terrific. And he's a, he's a great friend. So he's he's living in New York now. And uh, writing his everything off. He's writing everything. And uh, so I called him. I told him I'm coming in. So we said, let's have lunch the day before my shooting starts again. And uh, he knows where I'll be staying on the Lower East Side. And he said immediately, hey, let's go to Katz's. Now, I know it sounds like I'm I'm one of the owners there. And I keep mentioning that place. But I'm not. And I said, you've got a deal. You know what? I think uh, I told my wife today, in fact, that, I don't know, I thought I'd like to go to a different part of the city, maybe, maybe meet him somewhere else. But, well, I don't care. If that's if that's the way he likes it, that's fine with me. Whew. Katz's Delicatessen of Houston Street Incorporated. It says, I'm reading the card here. It says, uh, open 365 days a year, and in quotes, a delicatessen, for 129 years, unquote. In any case, so sure, that'll be that'll be good. I have memories. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to go to the comic strip there and 
do a couple of spots there, do a couple of shows, and uh, and see if see at that time when I was starting out, and I and my friends and our uh, little comedy group there, uh, well, you know, most of them: uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Paul Reiser, Mark Schiff, Carol Liefer, Jimmy Brogan, and me. And uh, you know what? Ali ran the pizza place next year. He owned that. That was his name, Ali. And uh, I always liked him. He was a big, tough guy. I mean, he used to spar with Muhammad Ali. That's one of the reasons he got that name. And uh, boy, he was always into all sorts of different businesses. He owned that the pizza place next year. And I'm telling you, Speaking of making good pizza on Milleronia, I'm telling you, Ali's place made some great pizza. And he would always come in. He was always in a suit, a suit and tie. And uh, golly, he was big. I mean, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and whew, just built, built the way he ought to be. I mean, once you decide to, I think I'll, I think I'll start sparring with Muhammad Ali you better be built like that. And he would always come in. It was so funny, folks. I always got a kick at it because I liked him. And he would uh, he would always come in to shake hands into the comic strip. And he'd say, uh, Lottie, hello. And uh, he was from Libya. And uh, none of the other comics wanted to shake hands with him because he was he was so tough. He was so strong. And he would swing that hand. And each of those hands was, well, like Andre the Giant. I mean, he was so big, and he would swing that his right hand in to shake hands. But he would swing the hand at about 23 miles an hour. And I always shook hands with him, not because I was tough. I just liked him, and he would swing that hand into mine, and he'd, with a big, boom, bam, clap, and you could, as I said, you you could hear it. And uh, But he never hurt me. And he held my hand there, and he would say, uh, would, he'd put a big smile on it and say, hello, Lottie. And then he'd say, you make the people laugh, Lottie? He did this every time, and I would say, yes, Ali, I I make the people laugh. And he would put a very serious expression on it and say, I could make you cry. <laughs> and... He wasn't. He, he didn't. I mean, but he could. He was, he was very rugged, very tough, and involved in a lot of things. You should be really tough for, and that's also something that I'm not going to say any more about. Uh, he he had many different kinds of uh, kinds of businesses in New York there, and. Uh, he was he well he was pretty tough for them. Everyone w- was everyone respected him. I mean, every, I don't mean in the in the in the comic strip they did there too, but I mean, he would go any wherever he went. People that no one would well give him any guff or anything, and he would walk in. They oh hello Ali, good to see you, and uh, he would walk in and sit wherever he wanted, just sit. He didn't need permission. And uh, at that point, I lived, boy, this was great. This is a good time that uh, my other roommates, I had three other roommates, and they were all uh, junior stockbrokers and bond traders. They, they were starting out. They had been in that business for a couple of years themselves, and they were doing very well. They were very successful. They were looking, they were moving up. And uh, they told me once that, uh, and I'm, you know, a comic. I'm there every night at the comic strip. And they said, yeah, we're going to. I said, where are you going tonight? I said, well, we're going to. There's a new uh, disco that just opened. Um, it's up on 86th Street. In fact, it's on the east side. So maybe you uh, know this place. It's on the second floor of this or that. And uh, I didn't know the place. But they loved it. Everyone like them, from the biggest places on Wall Street and the biggest companies and the uh, – all through New York and all the biggest buildings and City Corp and everything, and people were just going there. They were really going to this place. And uh, especially people kind of came from wealthy families, and they were very 
good-looking young men and women who had just been a couple of years out of college themselves, and they had their first jobs there, and they were uh, they would go there to dance and date, and they uh, well, they were all uh, well, they were as blonde as Vikings, you know. And uh, so Ali said to me one night, I had just been on stage, and he said to me, "Lottie, come uh, with me. I want to show you uh, my new uh, business." And he, we get into his car, which not surprisingly was a very nice car. And he drives me up. It's about uh, five, ten minutes away to this place. He takes me and up a staircase, and it is, was on a second floor there, and it's jammed with blonde kids from college, and then the, you know other folks there. But also, that was that was the main clientele, and uh, he came in there. And I said, this is yours. He said, this is my place. It's, he opened it. He built it. He had some people. And it wasn't that it was fancy, but he made it safe. And they were, uh, and he was making good money off that. And I, I don't even know what that phrase means anymore. But he would go, he he took me as he's telling me, you know, this goes with this. he's describing this or that in, in his life. And he would go behind the bar. And the bartenders there, not surprisingly, wouldn't say anything or do anything. They would just back off. And he would go to each of the cash registers there. It was a cash place. They, he didn't need credit cards, and nobody needed credit cards to go there. So it was all cash. And he would go. He took this first time there. He took a shopping bag from, uh, well, from... One of the big markets there. I mean, a big supermarket. So it was brown with a – didn't have handles on it. It was just brown, a big brown bag. And he put it – he filled it with cash. All the cash from the register, he would reach in and take you know, big hunks. He didn't count anything. He knew no one was going to steal from him because – would you? But he filled it with cash. Folks, there had to be like 40 grand in there. And he filled it with cash and then rolled the top of it and didn't even say to the bartenders, by the way, all right, back to work. He didn't, he just left because the bartenders each lost 15 pounds of sweat just having him there. So they, they didn't, I don't think he's going to kill anyone. And he, so he and I walked out, I'll never forget this, and there was a, a young couple dancing. And I'm teasing about saying when they were blonde. They were. They're just very good-looking kids and beautiful. And they were kids. They were out of college now, so they were 22 or something. And they're dancing, and they're slender, and they had nice clothes on. And Ali, uh, the girl, and the girlfriend of this guy, you know, uh, caught Ali's eye, which is probably not what you want. But... <laughs> but he sees her, and wow. So we're about 10 feet away from their dancing, and he gives me, he just kind of jams the bag into my into my stomach, says, hold this, Luddy. And that's the money. That's $40,000 in a brown paper bag. And he goes over, and he takes her by the hand. Again, doesn't say a thing. Not to the guy. Doesn't say, I'm cutting in, or hi, how are you? He just takes her hand and kind of, twirls her away another five feet or so and starts dancing with her in uh, not holding on to her, but he's dancing and she's petrified, and <laughs> which is both the correct actions. And he's as happy as could be. Look he's, who he's dancing with. And she looked back at her boyfriend, the boyfriend. Now, again, these are just kids. who They're not used to doing anything tough anyway. And uh, the boyfriend starts... To, she looks at him, and he looks at her, and then he starts to move forward towards Ali, dancing with her, because he's, well, you got to say something to him. Hey, hey, what are you doing? But this, he takes one step, and I, in a great move of, well, of, of strength, just, just I just put my hand on his chest, and I'm still holding the bag of money. And I just said, do yourself a favor. Trust me on this. Don't do that, whatever you're thinking. Don't go over there. He's going to be, he's dancing and having fun. We're going to be out of here. Trust me. In just l less than a minute. And nothing's wrong. And 
do yourself a favor. Don't make anything wrong. I said, and he was, he looked at me and I said, that's that thing you hear a lot. I said, please look at me. And he looked at me and I said, trust me on this. Don't do anything. You'll have your girlfriend back in less than a minute and then we'll be gone. And he did. He trusted me. He didn't move over there. And sure enough, about 40 seconds later, Ali's done. And he doesn't even kind of walk her back to the guy. He says, all right, laddie. And he comes back over. He comes over to me. And he uh, takes his bag of money back. And we go back out the staircase. So he's he's leaving. He built this Harvard Yale Club or whatever the thing was. I don't know if you know it hasn't had a name. But... Everyone I knew was talking about it and went there. And they would spend, you know, these weren't cheap places. Just to get a beer, it's all cash, as I said, but get a couple of beers or a couple of shots or something. But it wasn't the kind of place where you go you go to get a sophisticated cocktail. Yeah, that would be that would be stupid. You wouldn't ask for something like that. You just what you'd ask for is give me a yeah, give me a bottle of beer and a shot of Jameson's. That's what you want. And you could knock that back and then go back to dancing with your beautiful blonde girlfriend. But anyway, boy, oh boy, that would be, uh, that would be, that's a memory I like. I liked Ali. I liked him a lot and I still do. I don't know if he's still around there and I'd like to, but I'd, I'd like to see him and, uh, and see if he, he wants, proposed being in business together. I'm not business together, but he said, Laddie, in California, you uh, have your place. He wanted that they, they could make a delivery to that my apartment. They could drop it off at my apartment. The fellows he worked with out there. And I didn't even ask, you know, I say, deliver what? And I don't know. It was in cases and in boxes. But at first I said, yo, okay. And he said they would give me $400. Uh, it would be every two weeks. And all I had to do was give them what was dropped off. And they would just give me the $400. And then, you know, uh, just a couple of days later I said to him, you know what, I uh, I don't know if I should do that. And uh, he really got that. He was all right, Ali. He, he got that. I didn't want to be in – this group doing whatever it is they were doing in that little business there that they had. Who knows what they thought of me or what they'd think or what they would be interested in doing. I wonder how much money this guy has. Maybe we could uh, take his money and then eat him. But, I mean, they. It was a, that's a good memory. I know that. And he understood, by the way, when I said, Gee, thanks, but no thanks. He said, yes, I understand. And uh, he got it. But folks, you and I, you would have done the same thing because you know the things I know. That Homer is Homer and Pluto is a planet. So remember, folks, as always, if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to, and someone there who cares about you folks, the game's over and you've won. Be well. Don't get into any bad businesses with people. We'll see you next time. <laughs> How am I doing so far? <laughs>